Summertime and the living's easy. Today we're talking about summer books. I've got a selection here for you guys. A big, a big selection. I actually haven't counted it yet, so I can't even say how many books there are. But there's a lot. There's a lot. It'll be in the title of the video, so you know how many books there are now. If you're looking for some summer book recommendations to get you in the summer mood, to get you feeling like it's summer, when it is summer, this is the video for you. <laughs> so... All these books take place over summer. Take a shot every time I say summer. You're gonna be wasted by the time this video ends. Let's get into it. So the first book I wanted to talk about is The Getaway List, and this is mostly because it's, uh, I don't recall it being spicy. And there's a lot of books on this list that were incredibly spicy. So yeah, this one doesn't have a lot of spice, which I enjoyed. So let me tell you what it's about. On Riley's high school graduation day, she realizes that she's lost herself while trying to please her mom. So to find her adventurous spirit, she heads to New York for the summer with her childhood friend, Tom. Together, they end up tackling their co-created bucket list called the Getaway List. And Riley is hoping that these adventures will help her discover a new path for herself and help her figure out who she is and what she wants. While she is there, she starts falling in love with not only New York City and realizing this is the place she wants to be, but she also starts falling in love with her childhood friend. The next book is Meet Me at the Lake by Carly Fortune. Yeah, by Carly Fortune. This book follows Fern and Will, who had an intense connection in their 20s. Now at 32, Fern is running her mother's lakeside resort, and Will unexpectedly arrives nine years later offering help. Of course, this ends up bringing up all these old emotions that she has been holding in for so long and a lot more unfolds as the book goes on. I don't recall this book being spicy. I'm trying to remember if there was like an intense schmexy scene. I feel like there wasn't. And honestly, if there was, I would have skimmed over it anyways because I just can't, guys. The next book is Every Summer After, and this is also by Carly Fortune. When Percy returns to the lake for Sam's mother's funeral, their connection is as undeniable as it had always been for the last six summers until everything fell apart. But until Percy can confront the decisions she made and the years she spent punishing herself for them, she'll never know whether their love might be bigger than the biggest mistakes of their past. This was a really good book. It just puts into perspective the decisions that you can make and the consequences that come from those decisions and how your life will play out depending on what path you take. Now the next book is an older one, but I had to put this on the list because if you have not read it, I promise you it's going to warm your heart. And that is Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. Okay, so there's a movie based off of this and it's just as good as the book. So read the book, watch the movie, you're gonna enjoy it so much. This book is about a group of friends that end up going thrifting and they thrift these pair of pants that end up fitting all of them. And the pants look amazing on all of them. So they decide that while they are on summer vacation, they will ship the pants to each other and document the experiences that they had in these pants. First of all, this is a great idea. It's a really good story. You get to see everyone's summer and overall, it's just such a good book. The next one is also an older book, and if you haven't read it, it's just one of those books you need to read, and that is Talk Everlasting. This book follows 10-year-old Winnie Foster, who stumbles upon the Tuck family finding out their secret, which is that they have been drinking from this magical spring that allows them to have eternal life. And in finding out that secret, they kind of kidnap her take her home with them to explain how she cannot expose this secret and why, and why living forever might not be the best option. I think this book is so eye-opening, especially if you struggle with aging, because it just shows how much of a blessing aging can be and the downsides, the cons of being able to have eternal life and the, the loneliness that could come with that. As a result, the next book is The Unhoneymooners. Now, this book does have some spice in it, but I do like it a lot, even the spice. So this book follows Ethan and Olive, who end up taking a honeymooners vacation package in place of her sister and his best friend, who ended up getting food poisoning and cannot go. So in order to not tip off the hotel staff, they have to act like they we're just married and they don't like each other. So they take this trip to Maui, participating in all of these different honeymooner activities. 
and have to fake this relationship to the max. And I will say I'm the biggest fan of fake dating tropes that enemies to lovers and it just gets so much better as the book goes on because of <laughs> all the tension of like hating someone and then realizing, wait, I kind of like this. Why? Why do I like this? Yeah, this book is incredible. And also the setting of Maui, the backdrop of Maui. Everyone wants to fall in love in Maui. At least I do. Another fake dating trope is the Spanish love deception. This book follows Catalina, who is in desperate need of a wedding date for a wedding taking place in Spain. So she decides to fake a relationship with her attractive coworker, Aaron, to avoid her family's matchmaking attempts. However, as they navigate their fake relationship, they find themselves developing real feelings for each other along the way. Again, I love this trope so much. It just doesn't get any better for me. I could read it a thousand times and I think I would never get sick of it. I love it. The next book is The Dead Romantics. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't know if this takes place over summer or not, but it just feels like a summer read to me. So I put it on the list and it's also a really, really good book. This book follows Florence, who's a ghost writer for a top romance author, but she loses faith in love after a major breakup. When she returns home and goes to her family's funeral parlor, she is shocked to find the ghost of her editor who is confused as she is. Yes, she can see ghosts. So as they deal with his unfinished business, Florence begins to rethink her beliefs about love and romance. This story is extremely unique. And I think there's a movie that's kind of similar to this. I'm not sure the name of it, but I swear, I swear there's a movie that's super similar to this. Another favorite on my list was The Summer Job. This book follows Birdie, who decides to run away from her life, taking her best friend Heather's job that she was offered in Scotland that she denies. And so she goes there acting as if she is her. So as Birdie tries to fill Heather's shoes as a world-class wine expert, she struggles with her growing attraction for a man who believes she is someone else. The next book is Summer and the City, and this book is based off of Sex and the City, and it's the second book of The Carrie Diaries. This story follows the iconic Carrie Bradshaw set in the magical summer of New York City. It captures her love for the city's vibrant characters, vintage boutiques, wild parties, and a captivating man who has captured her heart. Delighted to be in a writing class, Carrie takes her first steps towards achieving her dreams. The reason I'm a really big fan of this book, I'm not only a very big fan of the show, but I, I love New York. And this book describes New York so accurately the way that I see it in my mind. And it really is a magical place. So if you're a fan of New York, or even if you're not a huge fan of New York, I enjoy romanticizing this place quite a bit because it really does deserve all the hype it gets. The next book is Summer Reading. This story is set in Martha's Vineyard, following Sam, a character with dyslexia, who takes care of her 14-year-old brother while seeking a new chef position. A romance unfolds between Sam and Ben, a library director, which causes issues as Ben's favorite thing to do is read, and Sam can't read due to her dyslexia. I have dyslexia, and I didn't know it could be to the extent that this was described, which is absolutely debilitating. I couldn't imagine. And not only does their love blossom, but he he reads to her so she can get to experience books even though she can't read them herself. The next book is The Summer Girl. College student Cassie returns to Avalon for the first time in years to spend the summer with her grandma and celebrate her 21st birthday. On her first night, she meets Tate, a charming sailor instructor known for his flings, and though Tate initially friend zones her when she asks him to be her fling for the summer, he soon realizes it was a huge mistake and he actually really, really likes Cassie. This book not only has a lot of spice between two people, but it also has a lot of individual spice. If you know what I mean, it's a lot. It, there's a lot, there's a lot going on. Other than that, it's a really good book. Great setting. You see a lot of tension between the two of them and the feelings growing without wanting to act upon anything. And yeah, it's a good one. Why do I feel like every book I've put on this list is a romance? Is summer the time for romance? Oh wait, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, this is perfect. This fits like the summer fling thing, you know, hot boy summer, hot girl summer. Yeah, this is perfect. It's perfect, yeah. 
The next book is Matchbreaker Summer. This is a YA book. There's no spice. This story is about 16-year-old Paisley attending her last summer camp before her mom sells it because she is getting remarried. So in order to break up her mom's new relationship so she doesn't have to move and the summer camp stays around, she teams up with a teen boy she has nothing in common with and they end up falling for each other. The reason I liked this book myself is because, okay, I'm a little biased. I attended summer camp for three days. You could say I'm a summer camp pro. It was one of the most unforgettable experiences of my life. To this day, I can remember those two nights and three days I spent there. The bonfires, the canoeing, locking the camp counselor out of our cabin at night. I mean, and reading this book really brought back all of those memories because it's romanticized a lot in this book. It really goes into description about how much the main character, did my voice just crack? <laughs> how much the main character loves this summer camp and why it's so special to her. The next book is The Summer I Turned Pretty. You probably know this book series. It's so good. The show, amazing. And it involves a love triangle. I love a good love triangle. So this book follows Belly, who spends every summer at Cousins Beach with her family and their friends, the Fishers. She ends up finding herself in a love triangle with not only one of the brothers, but both. Can anyone say that's ever happened? I've never in my life had that happen. That would be so crazy. Also, if you've read this series, can you tell me which team you're on? Because I am not team Conrad. I am Jeremiah all the way, all the way. I would take him in a heartbeat. I do have a couple uh, offbeat summer reads like The Island by Adrian McKenty. This is a book that takes place in Australia. It's about a family that goes there on vacation and they end up taking a trip to an island for the day and something terrible and unexpected happens. And uh, they end up trying to cover it up, which completely backfires, leaving them questioning if they will ever get off the island again. It was quite an adventure and it does take place over summertime, so it's perfect for that setting, but it's a very fun, fast paced thriller and it has the perfect setting for summertime. It just really depends what you're going for. This is not a romance in any way. Another not romance, even though there is a romance in this, is Where the Crawdads Sing. This book takes place over summer, but it has two different timelines, okay? So be prepared for that. The first timeline describes the life and adventures of a young girl named Kaya as she grows up isolated in the marshes of North Carolina. And the second timeline follows an investigation into the apparent murder of Chase Andrews, which Kaya was associated with. This book is so good. The movie is also incredible. It's going to be a summer read that isn't going to leave you super happy the entire time, but you will get some sparks of joy a little bit. And it's quite shocking, which leads me to the next quite shocking book. You've probably read this at some point already because I feel like Everyone in the world has read this, but it's We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. So this book follows the Sinclair family that is on summer break on a private island off the coast of Massachusetts. And it follows Cadence as she spends the summer on the island with her cousins and friend and something ends up happening and she just stops hearing from everybody. This, this book is crazy. This is a one of a kind story. I've never read anything like it. If you haven't read it, go pick it up. You're gonna enjoy it a lot. The next book, which is also fitting with this thriller vibe is The Only One Left by Riley Sager. Riley Sager never disappoints. I don't know what it is about his writing, but it's so good. I'm always left like in awe of what's going on. Also, I'm pretty sure this takes place over summer, but I, I totally forget, but I feel like it's a summer read. And if it's not, it's okay, it's still a good book, so you should read it. In 1929, the Hope family murders shocked Maine, with 17-year-old Lenora as the main suspect, though never proven guilty. Since then, she hasn't left her mansion Hope's End or spoken about that night ever since. So in 1983, home health aide Kit arrives to care for the mute elderly Lenora. Communicating via typewriter, Lenora offers to reveal the truth about the murders. And as Kit listens, she discovers there's more to the story than anyone ever knew. This book has a lot of twists and turns. If you're one that doesn't like that, I don't know if you're gonna enjoy going on this adventure. You're gonna have to think about it a lot. I'll stop there, that's enough. <laughs> the next book is Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. If you have never read a Taylor Jenkins Reid book, 
What are you doing with your life? You're gonna love it. All of the stories interconnect. It's the same world. It's crazy. You will read any novel and you'll start to notice that other characters are popping up from other storylines and it's, it's so good having an interconnected world. This book is set in Malibu during the 1980s following the Riva siblings during their annual summer party, where tensions rise, secrets are revealed, and family dynamics come to the forefront. This story explores the themes of love, betrayal, and forgiveness within the glamorous world of the Riva family. Next, I wanted to talk about Emily Henry's books. All of them are the perfect beach reads. I mean, she literally has a book called Beach Read. If you've never read Beach Read, People We Meet on Vacation, Book Lovers, Happy Place, I'm still not done with that book, but I will be. And her new one, Funny Story. I mean, all of those I feel like would fit the, the theme really well for summer, especially. I will say, you know how I said I don't like spicy scenes? I like spicy scenes in her books. I don't know why, but I do. Should I go into what those books are about? Or do you know them? I guess I have to assume you don't know them. Yeah, so People We Meet on Vacation. This book follows Poppy and Alex, best friends who take annual summer vacations together. But after a falling out, they end up deciding to reunite for one last trip to mend their friendship. And as they revisit old memories, their feelings for each other resurface, complicating their relationship even more. The next book is Beach Read. This book is a romantic comedy about January, a romance writer, who moves to her late father's beach house to overcome writer's block. There she meets Gus Everett. Yeah, I forgot how much I loved him. I forgot how much I loved Augustus. I just realized, yeah. Mm, maybe this one is my favorite. <sighs> I love him. Who happens to be her college rival and a literary fiction writer, and he's also her neighbor. They end up challenging each other to write in new genres and develop a friendship that turns into something more. I forgot how much I loved Augustus. And next on the list is Book Lovers, which is another Emily Henry novel. It doesn't, none of these disappoint. I swear to you, you are going to love them if you haven't read them yet. So this book is an enemies to lovers. We love it. And it follows Nora, who is a literary agent and editor, Charlie, whose worlds end up colliding in the unlikely place of Sunshine Falls, North Carolina. But it's not all good because Nora and Charlie had met previously. I'm pretty sure they live in New York and it was like the worst meeting ever. So when she sees him, she's not happy about it. It's a really good enemies to lovers though. The next book is Happy Place, which I have not read entirely, but I already know it's gonna be good. Just take my word for it and the rest of the world's word for it. Former college sweethearts who broke up five months ago, but they haven't told their friends yet. So they decide to go on their yearly cottage getaway to pretend everything is fine for one last time. With the cottage for sale, they fake happiness for one last week together, but as they pretend, their lingering desire for each other starts to resurface. And another book of hers that came out recently is Funny story, I'm not entirely sure if this takes place during summertime, so I'm not gonna say that it does or doesn't, and I'm not going to read the synopsis because I actually don't know, but just wanted to put it out there. If you've read all of these, it's time to pick up the new one, and I'm saying that to myself too, because I haven't read it yet. So that is it for all of my book recommendations. If you have any summer books that you would like to recommend, feel free to comment below for me and everyone else here. I hope that you found some new books to add to your summer reading list coming up because summer is almost here. Oh my gosh. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day, night, whenever you're watching this, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!